Hi everybody, Joe Wolverton, Teacher of Liberty here with you. Um, I know with this whole coronavirus thing, some of you are feeling extremely, well I shouldn't say extremely, you're feeling lugubrious, which by itself means extremely uh, gloomy and sad. So don't be lugubrious, right? Go look up lugubrious, that'll give you something to do, right? But I'm gonna, I've posted a video about the coronavirus, you can see what I think there, but I wanna spend some time I feel as your teacher and as your friend and as someone who has this knowledge that I want to share, I have a, a fiduciary duty to share with you this uh, the good news and some good stuff to think about while you're alone. And I really want you to think about it because this is good stuff. So this first, I'm going to do a series of short videos uh, talking to you about Germania, which is a short book written by Tacitus. Tacitus uh, wrote this book about 90, about AD 90, so about 90 years after the birth of Jesus. His father-in-law, Tacitus' father-in-law, was a soldier in the army, and Tacitus was interested in why the Germans seemed so difficult to conquer when other tribes, other peoples, seemed so easy. I mean, Caesar went up, 130 years before this and just massacred the Gauls. And so Tacitus was like, why are the Germans so tough, so resistant? Now, it's called Germania, which means Germany. It's what we still call Germany, about the same place. A little bit of Scandinavia is included in this, but mostly it's what we call Germany. Uh, Switzerland a little bit as well, right? Austria. But just think Germany, that's what Germania talks about. So if you're German ancestry or English, because the Anglo-Saxons were German tribes that invaded England. So if you're German or Scandinavian or English, these are probably your ancestors uh, nearly 2000 years ago. So they, the record that Tacitus gave, gives us is full of hope, full of good examples from our ancestors. So I want to share that with you, okay? And I'll do a few of these videos to keep them short and try to keep them on a theme. So the first thing I want to talk about, Tacitus starts out by discussing what it is that made these German people unique. What is it that kept them from becoming subsumed, conquered by the Romans who were so powerful? What happened? So I want to read you a couple of quotes and then we can discuss this, okay? So let me read the first one and then we'll discuss it. So Tacitus writes in Germania, Amongst them too are found that kind of verses by the recital of which they inspire bravery. Nay, by such recital itself they divine the success of the approaching fight. According to how loud be the chanting, they urge furiously or shrink timorously. All right, so he's talking about in battle, what are these Germans doing? So these Germans, they fight in what we would call a militia. They fight with their family, their extended family, uncles, brothers, cousins, fathers, right? And he says what they will do is they will do sort of a war chant, right? And they're there with the people they know, the guys they know. And they will know and they will feel brave or feel afraid based on how they notice that their brothers and cousins and their father, how they're strong they're chanting, how brave they're being. If these guys are all, oh, we can get them, then each one of them feels they will urge furiously. If he hears that his dad and his uncle and his brothers are like, yeah, let's get him. Then he'll be afraid and he'll be like, why don't we not, you know. And then they'll lose the battle, he says. It's sort of self-fulfilling prophecy, right? If everybody's fired up, I'm fired up. If everybody acts afraid, I get afraid and we lose. Guys, think about applying this to yourself and the people that you hang around with. 
Do you hang around with people that encourage you to urge furiously into the fight against wickedness? Or do you hang around people that the way they act makes you scared? Which way is it? Be wise with these like our German ancestors. Hang around people that when you're just hearing how excited, how fired up they are for virtue and for good, that it makes you feel fired up too. Do that, all right? Okay, remember that. They would get fired up when they were around people that fired them up and they would get scared when they're around people that don't seem to have that kind of vigor for virtue. All right, I'm gonna read you another quote now, okay? You ready? Here we go. They apply their shields to their mouths, whence the voice made by rebounding swell with greater fullness and force. Now, they would take their shields and they had round shields that they would hold. They would hold them up to their mouth so their voice would would rebound, as he calls it, reverb, would echo and be sound louder. How this sound, like you take your phone and you put it in a box or a Pringles can and it sounds like a speaker. Our ancestors were doing that nearly 2,000 years ago. They would, instead of just chanting, I'm gonna get me some Romans, they would put their shield in front and it would sound louder. Now what I'm gonna tell you is, when we read in the Bible about the armor of God, what is the shield? The shield of faith. I'm telling you guys, there is a power that comes from expressing, bearing testimony, describing things that you know yourself to be true. It's putting that shield of faith close to your mouth because you're telling the things, I, Joey, write these things and I know them to be true. Think about that. Having those experiences that you can share with others encourages them to be better. And that makes your testimony, your witness, whatever you're talking about, your story, your encouragement, it sounds louder when you bring that shield up to your mouth. When you bring that, show them that that faith is close to you. I have my faith close to me. All right, last one, guys. All right, let's look at one last quote for today. They have remained a people, pure and independent, resembling none but themselves. This was what Tacitus found out was one of the greatest things about these Germans. They remained a people pure, independent, and resembling none but themselves. Now, I'm not going to talk about pure as far as race is concerned, but let's talk about purity as in virtue. These Germans remained pure, independent, and resembled none but themselves. In the Bible, we read that as Christians, we should be a peculiar people. We shouldn't be like the world. Wordsworth said, the world is too much with us. We want to be the sort of people that encourage others to be good, to fight wickedness, to stand up for freedom and virtue and vigilance. We can be those people, if we remember our German ancestors, as Tacitus records it in Germania. They were pure. Guys, be virtuous. Hang out with those people that are going to chant with virtue. They were independent. We don't take our cues from other people. We know what is right and we do it, regardless of what people say or how other people look at liberty. We look at it. The Lord God made us free, and we are free indeed, and we hold that dear to ourselves, our freedom. And finally, they resembled none but themselves. Let's take great care to not use the language of the world, dress in the clothes of the world, follow the entertainment of the world. Let's take real good care to resemble none but ourselves, so that when someone looks at you, They know that you're different. They know that you hold yourself to a higher standard. All right? Guys, this is part one of Germania. Stay tuned, and I hope you really like it, because I love talking about it. All right, guys. Bye-bye.